recognize the gentle lady from New York, Ms. Tinney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the witnesses. This has been tremendous. And uh, I just want to follow up on something that Mr. Hearn said. Uh, he said he, that how many people talk about things they don't know about? Uh, and I want to add that as a small business owner, how many of these people don't even try to find out the answers? And so I thank the chairman for doing this and hearing directly from you about what your issues are as small business owners and the struggles that you face. And uh, my business was started 77 years ago by my grandfather. And we have similar issues in New York. Uh, but I will tell you, um, if you want to know about killing prosperity, the story of New York uh, is how one party Democrat socialist rule destroyed the state of New York. And I say that for a reason, because this isn't the days of Reagan O'Neill that we once enjoyed as a country. There is a certain element in New York State, particularly, that's hurting our country and hurting our state in terms of regulations. And I agree that there is a middle ground. We do need, and, and the mayor, thank you for saying this, we do have to care for the truly needy people in our communities. That's an obligation we have. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we all have a mission to do. But there is a middle ground between are we helping, hurting, and are we hurting our small business owners and our taxpayers? And so I like when you said, uh, when you were asked the question, uh, do you, how are your profits? Uh, that is a huge question in New York. Most of us don't have any profits. Boy, would I love to have profits. The only problem is when you get profits, you issue dividends and you get taxed twice. So uh, that's something that uh, I haven't had the joy of experiencing. Uh, but I wanted to just um, go, go back and just ask you a little bit about um, dealing with some of the issues as a, an employer. Uh, and I wanted to actually start with Mr. Jackson and go down the line. Um, we, we really appreciate your service. Um, West Point's wonderful in New York. My son's a Naval Academy graduate, so uh, I appreciate the rivalry, but wonderful institution as well. Uh, so thank you so much for your service and honorable service. Uh, but you know, in terms of small business, you mentioned something, and this is something that when I go back to whether it's entitlements, uh, one of the issues we face as an employer is many of our, our employees are boomers who are coming back to work, and many of them are already uh, getting some kind of public assistance. So they're asking us to actually pay them less or to get less hours so that they can continue to work. Is that something that you're facing in your business, uh, Mr. Jackson? I'm sorry, could you uh, phrase the question differently just so I can understand what you're asking? Yeah. Are you having employees come in that don't want to work as many hours and, don't, and, and are and reaching a limit where they would not be eligible for some of the entitlements they may be getting? Maybe in, the, in case of seniors who are collecting Social Security, don't want to you know, impede or impinge on their Social Security, or other people are receiving other types of benefits because the, they don't want to get to that level. Absolutely. We've seen that. Okay, Any, uh, about Mr. Mills with your organization. Uh, we, we've seen the same thing. And, you know, my, my greatest, you know, I have people ask me all the time, I, I'm at retirement age, and they say, well, when are you going to retire? And I said, and do what? <laughs> I, I like what I do. Exactly. I don't, I'm not going to just sit home and die. I, I, I have to be doing something constructive. My greatest fear is the employees that I have that have been with me 30 years, and I have many of those, 25 and 30 years, I'm really more worried about them retiring. So I'm doing all I can to work with them to keep them. They are my brain trust. And so it's, these are concerns because you have to, you know, I'm, you know, I'm on, uh, you know, I've had to already apply because I'm, I'm 66, I'll just tell you. But um, you don't look it. Thank you. I, I'm concerned about uh, my employees really facing those same things of not being able to make as much money in order to draw their Social Security. And so uh, it's, it's a concern, and it should be a concern for a lot of people in, in the workforce because these are people we depend on. Uh, they have so much experience. Thank you. I'm going to reclaim my time for it because I want to save a question for Mr. Brevetti, I, all great witnesses. But, um, you know, Joe Biden said in his State of the Union address that we only have about 10 years left of, of fossil fuels. Um, I, I'd like you to address what that would do to the economy since there are a lot of taxes on gas and other things that fuel our economy, run our infrastructure, our transportation. But also, would your community benefit most from a tax credit to help buy an $80,000 luxury electric vehicle or from policies that reduce gas prices? Can you answer, kind of hit those two two-sided questions there? Well, <clears throat> I'll address the first question about uh, Biden's 10-year comment, uh, even the most uh, liberal um, 
Energy Policy Group, which I believe personally is the International Energy Agency, okay, the IEA, I think they show us using almost the same amount of oil in 2050 as we're using today. It, it, it kind of continues to rise little peaks and drops. So oil is not going away. Its products are used in so many things besides for transportation, you know, tires on vehicles. Natural gas, of course, has so many other products. Fertilizer for our farms. Um, I don't see us running tractors out of anything other than diesel. And if you're going to mine uh, lithium and strategic metals, that's all going to be done with equipment that's going to be using diesel most likely. So I don't see that going away. Uh, in the aspect of renewables, um, when the wind quits blowing, which it occasionally does in Oklahoma, you have to you have to. <laughs> You have to immediately come on with a backup power supply. So for every megawatt of wind, you've got about an equivalent megawatt of natural gas uh, combined cycle turbines that spool up. So uh, that's not going away. Uh, to the uh, aspect of your, uh, your second point on the, um, the electrification Tax credit for an $80,000. Yeah, tax credit for $80,000 vehicles. Yeah, the people who buy those are wealthy. They don't need a tax credit. And, you know, in much of the country, uh, the world will, world will electrify and is, but in much of the country, it's not there yet. You know, you couldn't drive across the state of Oklahoma, not even to mention. Thank, like thank you all very much. Thank you so um, much, Mayo. Mr. Snyder. You're